Okay, so welcome back to another video. Just thought that it might be a nice idea to bring you along with me for a few holes um, whilst I describe exactly how I approach each shot. I imagine that it could be helpful for perhaps one or two of you. And uh, you know, that's really the goal to be helping you guys as much as I can. So I am on the second hole here, it's par five. I didn't film on the first or near the second tee because uh, there were quite a few people around. I didn't really want to draw attention to myself. I have 211 yards to the pin. Um, it's a fairly middle pin. We have a bunker short right and quite a bit of room left. So it's also a bit into the breeze. So it's probably playing closer to 220. And that means for me, it's just a standard four iron. Okay, so because the ball's below my feet, this is gonna move right a bit. So I'm gonna actually shift my start line slightly left and just allow for the slope to move the ball towards the hole. So I'm picking out a target here behind the green. You might be able to see it on camera. Um, I'll point it out for you. It's a tree just to the left of the pin. Okay, that's gonna be my start line. Uh, being really, really precise with that. You know, aim small, miss small, as they say. And from there, you know, I'm just going to commit to a stock swing and the ball should feed in, right? So here I'm lining up uh, an intermediate target to that tree. We'll then line up to the intermediate target. Double check, then commit. So drifted just a bit right. Good strike. I probably needed to allow for a bit more curve, but uh, you know, it's by the green on a par five into and see what we can do from there. All right, so the club was good. I'm pretty much pin high and it just kicked right a bit and ended up here. So this is a fairly simple shot, actually. It's straight uphill. I definitely missed on the good side. So what I'm focusing on here uh, and with every chip really is my landing spot and my trajectory. Those are two things that I really stress when it comes to chipping and when I teach people, I stress those two factors and you know how we need to really be deliberate um, about where we're landing it and how we want it to take off because that's gonna dictate how it reacts. So it's uphill, a mid trajectory, uh, landing it quite far up, expecting it to stop fairly slow because it's uphill and then releasing to the left. Right. Okay, it's a bit past, but within the three foot circle. All right, so we've left ourselves uh, quite a tricky putt here. Um, ideally, I would have liked to have missed this short so I have an uphill putt for birdie, okay? But, you know, at the end of the day, we can't really complain. It's just over three feet. It's gonna be quick. And the first goal, actually, I learned this in college, right? Anytime we had a putt like this, which can get away from you, my coach taught me this and he had a tremendous short game. He stressed always that the main concern here is to not three putt. I mean, that's gonna leave us in a terrible state of mind and that would really be a waste. Okay, so pace is really important. You don't wanna ram it and then three putt because that's really gonna derail your round. So what I'm doing here is aim point. I feel a bit more pressure in my right foot, which is telling me that the putt's gonna break the right. And then I'm going to, based off of how much pressure I feel in that foot, uh, you know, that kind of tells me how far outside the hole I'm going to aim and so on. So, you know, I felt a fair amount. I'd say most of this part is downhill rather than left to right. So I'm going to aim this just outside of the lip. Okay, I'm giving the hole away here. But because I'm going to play the putt with not much speed, it should take the break. Okay, so I've done all the work here. I've got my read, I've lined it up. I've double checked it with my shaft. So now just pace, okay? You know, those putts are scary for everybody, but as long as you go through your routine and ultimately focus on speed, and I think it's key to focus on not three putting those. Okay, two putt at worst, but get your read, trust your line, and then just put a good stroke on it. You have to really understand that there's a chance you're probably gonna make it, you know, from three, four feet. The odds are in your favor. So if you think that over the putt, 
you'll be in a better frame of mind rather than standing over this putt and thinking, oh God, you know, it's a tough one, I'm gonna miss it. Go do your routine, that will build confidence and then put a nice stroke on it, thinking that there is a chance I'm gonna hold this. Right, one under, uh, on to the next. <sighs> okay, so we're on the beautiful part three third hole here. And the aim of the game, as should be the case with most part threes, in fact, all part threes, is to hit the middle of the green and to butt. Okay, if you look at the stats on the PGA Tour of part three uh, leaders, you'll find that not many of them are close to par. If you were to play every par three in par, you'd be doing quite well. So I have 177 pin, 168 to cover that front right bunker, and it's about three yards uphill. Okay, so 180, slightly into off the left. I wanna play this about 185, and just take a little bit off a six line, but being really deliberate with my target here in the distance, that tree, picking out an intermediate just in front of me, lining up to that, double checking, and just committing. Okay, drifting right a bit, but it should be good. Right. Covered that bunker, which is why I clubbed up a bit. And uh, it's not middle of the green, but it's on the green and we should have a birdie putt. Had I hit the seven with that strike, I probably would have been in this bunker. And uh, although it's not too bad a miss, it is, oh, I think this is my actual pitch mark. It's, uh, you know, obviously not as good as being on the putting surface. So this is probably around 30 feet. Okay, just under. And yeah, I mean, any part three, that's uh, acceptable, right? I don't think you need to be disappointed with anything around 30 feet on a part three. So for me, same routine again with my putting. I'll just go about a third up. And I feel pressure going that way, but not too much. So it's not gonna break, you know, boat loads. I'll probably aim this about uh, one and a half cups out. Maybe I'll go one cup out to the right. I'll double check that. And then it's really about committing to the stroke. You know, I've done all the work here. I've chosen my break, I've lined it up, I've double checked. And you know, that just gives me the confidence to step up and put a nice roll on it. So I'm lining up to my line. Okay, it stayed out there a bit. The goal there wasn't to hold it. It was to get it near the hole and get my par and move on, right? If it goes in, it goes in. But like I said, par threes, the goal should always be to hit the green, two putt, get out of there. Uh, just out of interest, I'm gonna play this a bit straighter and see if it does move to the left. Pretty straight. I mean, it moves minimally. Could have kept it inside the hole. Um, yeah, can't really complain with the par, so on to the next. So welcome to hole four, a rather long par five, which is also rather tight and it requires nothing other than a good swing off the tee. So although it's a tight fairway, I really can't put too much pressure on myself. Otherwise I won't be able to execute. So I'm not gonna try swing too hard at this. I'm probably gonna swing about 80% because my main concern is getting it in play and then giving myself a shot to actually hit at the green, okay? There are times on the course where, of course, you can hit it hard and open the shoulders a bit, but this isn't really one of those cases. I'm gonna swing about 80%, focus on getting this in the fairway and just go through my process. So I'm picking out a target left side of the fairway, I'm actually aiming at a green side bunker here. I have an intermediate target in line with that. <sighs> so I'm just gonna line up to my intermediate Double check. Just put a good swing on it. Okay, pushed it a bit, but should be just in the right rough. All right, so I don't know if the angle off the tee is a bit strange or what, but it wasn't actually as bad as I thought it would be. Um, we held the fairway and I think we should be able to get this somewhere around the green. It's gonna be a long way, but let's see. Oh God, we have 295 to the pin, probably about 275 to the front of the green. 
uh, left here is not ideal. Right is definitely the better miss. So, you know, am I going to swing out of my shoes here? Not really, because I probably can't get there with the three wood. Um, my goal here is to just hit a stock three wood, probably about 270, 280 to the front right section of this green. And then uh, try getting up and down for birdie. There's really no reason to swing out of my shoes here because really getting it near the hole is quite unrealistic. So again, being really deliberate with my intermediate target here, picking out a tree just past the pin on the left. Okay, lining up to that intermediate. Double check. It's going straight at it. I imagine it's going to be a bit short. Go. <laughs> okay, just on the fringe at the front of the green. So it should be a nice opportunity to make up and down for birdie, but we definitely take those. Okay, so I am secretly really glad I ended up here because I was filming some videos earlier for my coaching page, which uh, I'll put on the screen right now. Anyway, and um, this is quite a tough shot, to be honest. So I'm not looking to get it within three feet. If I can get it within 10 feet, I'd be really quite happy from here. But certainly I do not want to be playing this like a bump and run, pitching it here, you know, and having to navigate this. I don't know what it is. It's a huge slope and it's just not really worth um, dealing with. So. Let's see, what do I see here? I'm not gonna take this all the way over it. Uh, I'm gonna pitch this about 60% of the way up with quite a high ball flight. And I'm not really gonna go for too much spin, but rather let it release down that slope and uh, somewhere near the pin. So, got my landing spot. I'm setting up for a mid trajectory chip. Let me just commit to that. Okay, that's exactly where I wanted it to land. It's releasing down and right to the hole. It's not within three feet. It's probably about four feet. And uh, we take those, you know, that was very, it was very easy. I didn't have to deal with this slope at all. I just pitched it past it and let it release to the pin. So I guess that's the video I wanted to make. And that's a, a point that I stress to everyone. If you can get good at controlling the trajectory and your landing spots, uh, you know, modern day wedges spin so much. Modern day balls spin so much. and. Uh, we really don't need to be playing chip and runs everywhere. Um, certainly on Lynx courses, it's a bit different, uh, you know, to keep the ball out the wind and whatnot, but I'm very much an advocate of using your more lofted wedges, just getting really good at controlling flight and spin and taking out all of the unnecessary stress. But uh, let's try hold this for birdie. Right, so it's a good chip there and we've left ourselves just over three feet, three, four feet. So this looks to be slightly off the left um, but not too much in it. So I'm gonna just see what I feel. Yeah, I mean, I don't feel much. So really this is gonna be played in the middle of the hole. Not much movement at all. I'm gonna line up, double check it. You now that's aimed dead center. So again, I've gone through my process. I know this is lined up where I want it to go. All I have to do is trust it. Okay, pretty stress-free par there, a uh, uh, birdie rather. And um, yeah, let's uh, move on to the next. Okay, this is hole five, I think. Uh, I do want to apologize if the camera is a bit uneven. It's quite hard to find flat terrain on the tee boxes here, but I'm trying my best for you. Um, this is really a straightforward drive, okay? The wind's off the right. I like to play a left to right ball flight. So what I'm going to do is just set up for something fairly neutral, which will fight the wind. If anything, the wind's gonna bring it back to the left, which suits this hole because it's a dog leg right to left. Okay, so I'm aiming kind of down the tee boxes here, picking out a tree in the distance, lining that up with my intermediate. Okay, lined up to that. Double check with my tree. Now just commit. OK, 
Okay, wind's bringing that back. It's drawing around the corner. Mm, should be okay. Bit of a toe strike, so that caused it to move a bit more right to left than I anticipated, but yeah, uh, no complaints, that's in play. Okay, so managed to work its way around the corner. It was a bit closer to the bunker, but uh, it's okay now. So 106 to the pin, slightly downwind off of the right. What I do is with each wedge, I have a half swing, a three quarter swing, and what feels like a full swing, which gives me three yardages per wedge. And, you know, four wedges in the bag, 12 yardages. So I have 106. My, I have a 110 shot with a 50. Uh, which is three quarters, but that's a bit too much. You know, it's helping off the right. So I then go down to my 100 shots. I have 100 with a lob wedge, which is full out. It's gonna get a bit high, spin up a bit, and it might not reach 106. I also have a 100 yard shot with my 55, which is, again, a three quarter. So same as my three quarter 50, but just 10 yards less. And that goes a bit lower, will run out a bit more, have a bigger first bounce. And that's the shot I'm gonna select here. So I'm gonna pick my 100 yard shot here with my 55 and commit to it to try to get another one or two yards out of it. So again, being very deliberate with my intermediate target in between that tree and the pin. Okay, so I've got that. Line up to that, double check. Okay, so now I'm hitting a quite aggressive 100 yard shot with my 55. turning left as expected because the wind is that way slightly right but uh, hopefully that's pin high and we have a birdie putt okay so as you can see this finished pin high um, just goes to show that having those different yardages and options is really quite a benefit because I knew that hitting this three quarters wasn't going to go long and my 50 degree or 60 degree rather uh, probably would have ended up short um, I need to be quick because I'm running out of battery on the camera. So we have about 10 feet here. I'm gonna go do my process. I feel like it's going a bit left here. Not much there. Um, to me, it looks straight. And, and now I have this conflict, right? With what I felt, what I see, that's created doubt. So I'm just gonna trust what I felt in my feet and try and quickly gain some confidence back because ultimately that's the most important thing in putting. Even if it's the wrong line, you just got to approach it with some degree of confidence. Um, right. Felt like I've rushed this a bit, but I went through my aim point. I did feel some movement to the left. I lined it up, I double checked. This is good. Okay, just trust the stroke. Okay, that was a good read. Uh, good stroke, probably a bit firm, but um, yeah, it's important to never ever second guess yourself when you're putting. And it's quite a nice benefit of using aim point, you know, what you feel is often uh, gonna be correct. So if ever you second guess yourself and you do use aim point, I'd always go with what you feel with the feet rather than what you can see with your eyes. Um, but uh, my camera is running out. If it does run out, uh, let me know what you thought of this type of video with this commentary. If it was helpful, if you would like to see more, I think it's uh, certainly something quite different and maybe it could help some of you. Um, I will try to get the next hole in as it's a part three, but uh, if I don't, yeah, let me know and I'd love to hear any feedback. Mm -hmm.